Hey guys, Woods Farm here, Project 222. This is episode 34. Today we're going to continue to work on the front fenders and uh, hopefully get the patterning for that done and even maybe start cutting metal and getting the fenders fabricated in place. So stick around and check it out. Okay, in the last episode we left off, we were uh, starting to pattern out the front fenders in cardboard and I talked about some of the challenges that I expected and I can say that yes, the fenders are proving to be difficult. Um, the main issue being um, the front geometry of our scale car isn't a perfect replica and I'm trying to match up their style of fender with our body and make everything look as correct as possible. So it's proving to be challenging. Um, I think I've gotten to a point where I, I like what we've got, so I think we're going to continue ahead. Um, i got a little bit of tweaking to do, and then I think we'll get to uh, cutting metal and starting to actually fabricate these fenders. Okay, before we go ahead and start patterning out these fenders, I just want to talk about some of the challenges that we're going to be dealing with. Um, going back several videos, um, you guys are aware that we weren't able to get the front nose uh, dimensions just right. Our nose is a little longer and some of the angles aren't exactly the same as on the original. So now that it comes to patterning out the fenders, we're going to have to deal with that. We're not actually going to be able to make a perfect um, copy of what you see on an original uh, 222. Um, there are some considerations, um, some things I noticed looking at the diagrams. Um, one thing that's kind of interesting is if you look straight on at the vehicle, uh, the front fenders appear to be slightly um, slanted towards the outside edge. Um, I wouldn't have thought that, but when you, you see that, there's definitely a few degrees of slant there. Um, I'm not really sure why that's there, if it was to deal with water uh, draining off of it. It appears the back fenders don't have that same slant, so I'm not really sure what's going on with that. But that's something to consider. Um, something else is just because our dimensions aren't right, um, I'm probably not going to be able to uh, match this kind of look and the position of where the fender kind of hits that body panel. A couple things I do want to try to focus on getting correct is kind of the side, the side view. I want to try to get this sort of um, these sort of dimensions just right. I'm going to focus on how much distance there is between the tire and the fender. Try to make sure we get that in the right ballpark. And then we're just going to have to use trial and error and see how this comes together. Um, hopefully it's not too difficult, but if we have to use a bunch of cardboard, and make a bunch of different mock-ups to try to get the right look, we will. Um, in a situation like this, it's just a lot about splitting the differences and looking back and seeing you know what's the most noticeable thing that we can correct to make the vehicle look and appear uh, right. Okay so just talking about how far we are right now um, for starters I went ahead and made this jig um, that fits over top of the tire and it allows me to have a center reference point off the center of the wheel hub and it also allows me to set a distance from the top of the tire to the uh, fender. Um, I measured off the diagrams about six and a half, seven inches of clearance. Um, so this jig allows us to uh, set this pattern up just right. One of the main things I wanted to focus on was trying to get this distance correct and also getting the side view also looking correct to the original. Now, I, this is going on to be probably the fifth version that I've done um, of the actual fender template. The original one, the slope, was a lot steeper. It was around 8 degrees. Um, I posted some pictures on the Facebook group, and guys seemed to think it was a little bit too much slope. And I would tend to agree, the problem being just trying to get this distance as close as possible. If you look in the original, the, the fender almost meets the top edge of the hood and then it comes down very close. There's almost no distance in here and I was also trying to make sure that height was correct 
uh, between the tire. So to try to deal with the slope, which originally I had it at around 8 degrees, now it's around 4 or 5 degrees, um, I actually increased the distance here, the height from the tire to the top of the fender, and I dropped it down just a little bit here. Um, so that seems to have helped the slope quite a bit. Um, I am focusing on trying to make sure this kind of triangular wedge looks about right, uh, working on this triangle. So it's been complicated, but uh, I think we're getting to the point where we're pretty close. A couple other things to consider is if you look top down at the diagrams, the leading edge here and the back edge, they appear to be square. Um, we're at a 90 degree angle to the vehicle, so I'm trying to get that right. Just trying to figure out this side edge. To me on the diagram, it looks like it's about an inch just out from the tire. And that corner point there, it looks like the fenders also extend a little bit beyond that corner point. So we've got to make some minor adjustments to these patterns. So that's what we're going to work on. Okay guys, that's the final version. I'm not going to monkey around with it anymore. Um, obviously it's not a perfect copy, but a lot of points on this version I like. The slope is a lot better. Um, it looks really good from the side. And generally speaking, when you step back, it has kind of the right feel. So we're going to go with it. There is a slight kind of roughly a one inch lip that kind of comes down at a 90 degree along the edge of it. That'll be something that I'll, uh, I'm gonna pattern out and add after I do the uh, steel. And the same as at the back, there's a probably like a four or five inch straight down little section there at the back. I'll do that later. Um, on the original, I talked about that storage compartment and we're not gonna do that, but I think that storage compartment probably provided quite a bit of support because um, it probably came out at least a halfway, I'm thinking. So this front triangular piece is going to, I might make that out of a thicker material. 
but on the inside, somewhere roughly in the middle, I'm going to add some sort of support as well. The top plate I'll probably make out of a heavier gauge material. And the front flap and the back flap I'll probably make out of like 16 gauge. Okay guys, now that I've got that patterned out and we're going to go with it, um, I can start fabricating. So I'm going to take a quick lunch break, come back here to the shop this afternoon and we'll start cutting metal and trying to get this uh, fender sorted out. Okay, we're about halfway there. Um, one thing I did decide to do is this uh, front leading uh, flap. I decided to do that at a 1 8 out of a thicker material. I figure it, there's a brush bar and a bumper lower on the tire, but I figure this edge is probably going to take a beating, this corner. Um, plus, I wanted to tie into a thicker piece. This is 1 8 as well. And this triangular wedge really supports a lot of the weight. You see photos of originals and guys are like standing on this and I just want to make sure it's good and secure. So underneath I'm going to add a gusset right roughly in the middle there, just a small triangular wedge to give it a little more support. Now the back 
flap. I am going to do that out of a thinner material um, just to conserve some of this thicker 1 8 that we have in our inventory. I don't think you need, we need that thick of material for a fender. However, I think right up here in this corner, I am going to cut like a little wedge, you know, that maybe comes out, you know, four or five inches of something thicker that I can really weld and it's just going to give a little bit more support to that. I'll put that that kind of gusset or wedge in there and then I'll just overlap that 16 gauge which will be the entire piece over top of it. we're going to wrap this video up here we've got most of the fender done on the driver's side there's still a couple of small trim pieces to do along the edge and a trim piece to add at the back bottom edge but generally speaking the fender's done um, there is some more welding to completely get it secured to the body I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out hopefully the passenger side um, is a lot easier I've got patterns to go on and I have a good idea of where the uh, fender needs to go I'm not going to show that in upcoming videos because basically it's the same process as what you just seen in this video. If you're new to the Woods Farm channel and Project 222, make sure to like and subscribe and click the bell. We're going to be putting out videos weekly um, throughout the spring and into the summer as we try to get the vehicle done. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them below. And as always, thanks for watching.